Tenchu is a legendary ninja stealth franchise. Today, we're going to play through the entirety of the third instalment as Best Boy Ricky Mara without pressing the jump button. So the full rules are as follows. Number one, no jumping, obviously. Number two, Grandmaster rank on every stage, the gentleman's way to play. Number three, no use of Grandmaster items. I feel it would be against the spirit of the run to be able to use invisibility and decoy spells. And number four, perfect stealth throughout. It is a stealth game after all. And now let's move on to the first mission. Starting off, this is a fairly chill level that will allow us to adjust to our new rule set. We start by grappling up to the rooftops, make your way across the far side of the level, only stopping off to clobber this jobber when he turns his back on us. As we make our way back across the rooftops, we're interrupted by this cutscene of three guards who are definitely not guarding the key for the cave entrance. We can drop down here and crouch walk our way in, swipe the key and roll out of there. Back on the rooftops, head around the side, drop down behind this clueless sap and bump him off. Quickly, run to the gate and open it up. The following corridor is fairly self-explanatory. Wait for them to turn around and aid in their quest to shuffle off their mortal coil. The only place where it becomes a little difficult is here. Make sure the innocent lady has turned around and grapple up above her. Then grapple again into the courtyard. Depending how long this has taken you, you should be able to make a beeline for this wandering spear salesman and inform him you only deal in swords. Then press up against this outhouse and wait for his bodyguard to turn around and give him the business end of Izayoi. From there, grapple up to the roof line and again over this incredibly small gap into the centre of the roof. Head to the right and as you fall off the edge, move Ricky Mara back towards the building. Now you should be able to easily crouch and enter this crawl space. Drop down into the empty room and head through some sliding doors until you reach this fork. Wait for this sentinel of the sanctum to turn around and then punch his ticket to the pearly gates. Turn around and wait outside what looks like a costume room. Nobble the cosplayer in denial when he turns around and move on. Drop down the shaft on the left and line up a grapple hook as far back as you can over this unfortunate narcolepsy sufferer, then put him into a deep sleep. You can ignore the cat, they aren't going to alert anybody. Then grapple up into the next room. Grab this ninja rebirth, just in case, and head through the doors. It's time to face Tajima, a rather ungentlemanly ronin who brings a gun to a sword fight. He can be finished off with a couple of triple slashes and a 360 combo, especially when the ground stab hits. Now, it's not that I'm playing badly here. Okay, I am playing badly in this boss fight. I'm about as effective as an IGN journalist at half past four post my second hour long lunch of the day. But, alas, we got the dub in the end. After that kerfuffle, head up the stairs and wait for this unlucky individual to turn around and give him a gentle love tap. Make your way through these sliding doors and again, ignore the cat. Grapple up into the roof space and be careful of this skyver dodging any work on the right hand side and give him a good talking to. Proceed until you reach this ceiling hole and rain death down on the poor bugger down there. From here, it's time for Nasu, a fat and rather boorish idiot. He'll send his personal guards at you, which you should polish off first, then turn your attention back to him. After you lay down some damage, he may try to feign surrender. Ignore this, just keep slashing like an absolute madman until he goes down. That's mission one completed, Grandmaster rank achieved, and an item we're not going to use. Now we need to head to Goda's castle, expunge some traitorous scum, and let Lord Goda know what's been occurring. Firstly, completely ignore this hole the dev chose to point us at. Turn around and roll down the second hole in the room and immediately hop down into the sand pit. Grapple up to the right and turn the corner. Two of Goda's men will be having a chinwag. Grapple over the top of them and dip into this side room. After the cutscene, the castle will have been taken over and attacked. Press against the wall and move up to the door to open it. When the Vega cosplayer reaches the door, inform him of how poor a choice of weapons claws are. Head back into the room and wait for his idiot friend to investigate. When he returns to his post, just give him a quick slice and dice. Head down to this garden area and keep tabs on the Wish.com Wolverine. When he starts to wander back towards the large white flag, go ahead and pop his clogs. Now go and crawl under the raised building and open this door with a key. Immediately get to one side just so you can't be spotted. Wait for this scoliosis riddled fellow to turn around and show him the business end. Head up the stairs and press against this wall. When the parachute pants enjoyer walks past, quickly retailer his collar and move on. Be wary of this exit, else the Freddy Krueger in the corner will see you. Let him turn away and send him to Dreamland. Head down these stairs and open this door. Wait for Nunchuck Norris to turn around and then drastically reduce his blood pressure. 
press against this wall and wait for the koala kid to walk to the corner and give him an impromptu butter knife surgery. Just behind this door is a shy bin bag salesman. When he faces the wall, quietly shift the poor bloke. Now head up the stairs and wait for the masked man with a man bun to run out the room and give him a poor quality haircut. Carefully open the next door revealing Frank the Fork Collector and give him a good poke when he turns around. Be quick to avoid Sensei Swordless in the corner and relieve him of duty when he turns to the side. In the next room with all the screens, wait for the ninja to turn around and then get decorating with a carotid fountain. Head straight for the Edward Scissorhands and show him what your blade can do. In the next room, you need to wait until the Shinobi fan starts to walk behind the screen, then you can intervene with a swift nick to the jugular. From here, you're off scot-free. Ayami will berate you and Rikimaru will say he's a shadow, because of course he does. And that is stage two, all wrapped up, Grandmaster rank is sorted, and yet another useless item is unlocked. After investigating the path of dead bodies were left behind, they all seem to have traces of limestone. And so, it's on to the limestone caverns to search for the Shichisto sword. We'll need to take three blowpipes for this mission. Everything else can be skipped, but does make the boss fights a little easier. Immediately run backwards and pick up the free ninja rebirth, then head to the lip of the cave and roll off. From your perch on the gravestone, grapple up to the watchtower and assassinate this level's first claw boy. After that, crouch and roll off the watchtower to blowpipe the patrolman, then roll your way through the water to the second cutlery connoisseur and let him become fish food. Now head into the cave, grapple over this small knoll and move through the caverns until you reach these chattering nannies. As soon as they're finished talking, stealth roll off the lip and deal with the first one on the train tracks, then double back and ice the second grandmother. From there, follow the path until you reach this slope and wait for this nerd neck looking dude to start walking, sprint up and give him a chiropractic adjustment. Follow the path round to the right and wait for the pot-bellied red fella to prepare to turn to the right for the second time, then grapple behind his right shoulder and get a tricky kill. This can go astray, but with some practice it gets fairly consistent knowing where you can grapple to that won't dump you into the inky void. Move forwards until you're at this vantage point and wait for this ADHD sentry to turn around three times, then drop down and administer a swift lobotomy. Then head forwards and grapple up to this ledge at the top of the room. When Suspect from Def Jam Fight for New York turns around, give him a good stick and poke. Wait just before the next hill for the tuning fork specialist to start to move away. Grapple over the gap and send him night night. Now this next section is a little tricky. You need to position yourself so that the wooden beam blocks line of sight. You'll know that you have the right position when the exclamation mark stops flashing at you and you can blowpipe the sunburnt dad bod without it going off. Then you need to grapple to this piece of geometry and steer yourself whilst descending to the walkway. I definitely didn't goof this on more than one occasion. Proceed to ninja roll off the far side, falling a distance to break most people's knees and head to the doorframe. Pause for the constipation demon to turn around and leave his corpse in the hall for one of his allies to see. When the wrist day skipper has decided there's nothing to see, dash up behind him and be his big spoon. Head down the hallway and up the hill to this overlook and wait for a chance to drop down. From here, roll your way across the wooden walkway and use this pillar to block line of sight with the black clad warrior on the left and use your last blowpipe on the horny devil ahead. Check you have a straight shot and advance forwards. Once the My Chemical Romance groupie starts to walk away, grapple over the ravine and end their black parade. When confronted with this walkway, grapple across when it's safe, drop back down to floor level before the man in black spots you, grapple up to the walkway near the entrance to the cave, and when Agent K turns his back, wipe his memory. Follow the pathway and grab the second freebie ninja rebirth. Now onto the boss for this mission, and this time we have strats. Onikage can be a little tricky with his constant kick attacks, but if you immediately drop a smoke bomb, this lets you get a full combo when he runs into it. Then you can throw a sticky bomb at him as he stands up and blow it up for maximum damage. I would repeat this, but I didn't quite have enough resources to do so. Your best bet would be to whiff punish him after he finishes a kick combo. Once he's dealt with, grab the Shichisto sword and oh no, he was a lesser imitation all along. Now you've got to fight him proper. But, well, he's practically identical to the first phase, so put him down, and that is stage 3 completed. Grandmaster rank in the bag, another pointless trinket we won't use. Now we need to head to the Amagai castle, but to get there, we need to cross this Ronin village. 
we will need to bring three or so blow darts with us for this level. Also, I was intrigued and checked out what Ronin actually meant. Ah. Uh huh. This level wasn't too difficult. There were a few areas that caused issues, but most of that was sorted when I'd got it routed properly. So, to start, we head off to the right, roll off into the cut and grapple up to the other side, and initially rolling away so no one sees us, then veer left into this alleyway, wait at the corner for this scholarly slacker to move left, and then shred his papers. Roll towards the next corner so the dog doesn't catch you, and wait for the college dropout to turn away from you. Then cross this gap and post up at the fence. When the neat starts to stroll out to the left, head out and loop behind him, give him a quick lesson on bloodletting, then head into the crawl space. Wait for the campus refugee on the right to cross in front of the wall, then blowpipe him. That will pull his educationally deficient friend towards you. Once he hops down, aim a well-placed dart and head on up to the corner wall. When the supply teacher turns away from you, roll off into the storm drain, approach the ramp and wait for the class delinquent to turn and walk away from you and give him a steelwork re-education. Wait behind the house ahead for a chance to expel the bottom set class clown and roll off avoiding any attention. Then head through the large double doors. Immediately hide behind the oversized buckets and wait for the truant student to walk between the two buckets and send him to the medical room. This will cause a bit of a commotion, but when it dies down it will give you a great chance to poke a few holes in the philosophy major's arguments. Now roll your way along this wall and crawl down the drain. Roll through this water section until you get out of the gate, grapple up on the left and discombobulate this desk work dodger, make your way clockwise around this arena and pull up onto this race platform. When the intellectual runaway is beneath you, rain the crushing reality of no prospects down from above, grapple up to the small brown hut on the right hand side and grapple onto the large white building across the road. From here you need to carefully aim a blowpipe shot at the finals flunker before you head into the large doors completing the level. Mission 4, crossed off, Grandmaster rank in the bag, and more items we will proceed to ignore. Now on to the castle Amagai to rescue Princess Kiku. This level is an absolute maze. I needed to check multiple times the proper route and all of the spinning doors cause all kinds of headaches. But to start off with, we need to head for this corner and wait for the clockwork clobber to walk past before we can safely flip his switch. We have a short platforming section, nothing to write home about. Just up and over, grapple high and fall onto the safe section here and up onto the next section. Grapple across this minuscule gap and wait to give a hard reset to the automaton below. Head into the next room and grapple on to this raised platform. When the $6 billion man turns away, up his price tag and move on to the next doorway. You'll need to be careful here. To get through this door, you need to roll under it, otherwise the spikes will hit you. Then wait for this beta edition R2-D2 to turn around and start rolling to the top left hand corner. Pop out and permanently decommission him. Head to the corner at the entrance to the foundry room. As soon as the scarecrow turns away, empty his stuffing and grapple across the gap in the next room. Head halfway up the stairs, and when the doll-faced Dalek moves to the left, grapple over the top of it to the room above. Run straight for and hug this wall. Check it's safe to cure Marvin's manic depression. Keep running through the next corridor so you won't fall through any of the pit traps. Wait for C-3PO's cousin, 14 times removed, to walk through the doorway and rearrange his internal carpentry. Follow the room, drop off this ledge, and head through this swivelling wall. As soon as the cutscene finishes, grapple straight up to the left and roll away when you pull yourself up to avoid getting spotted. Keep rolling through the door and head to the far corner. This avoids the explosives and lets you safely grapple up to the wooden beams. Take the right hand path, drop down and grapple across this familiar looking gear. Grapple to the right hand side ledge and wait for an opportunity to send this wind up soldier back to prototyping. Head up the stairs and grapple to this high platform above. Hang fire until the denizen of ours moves away and forcibly send him to Kansas. Head to the right and grapple up this area with blue lights. Immediately pull up and check around the corner. When Satan's shopping trolley moves away from you, send it to the scrap heap and grapple over the obvious spike traps. When you land, roll away to avoid the less obvious explosive arrow traps. Turn left and head to the end of the corridor. Be wary not to be spotted by the offspring of Chucky and the girl from the ring. Let them trundle away and banish them to the Shadow Realm. Dash through this outside area, stopping only to grapple across an inconsequential gap and pause by this corner for this termite target to turn about face and leave him in a log pile. Grapple up to this elevator shaft type area and then across the chasm to the next room. Be very careful not to get hit by the large blades and grapple up to this handhold. 
When Bulsa Bushido is walking, you can hop up and show him the way of the sword. Grapple to the other side of the room and head up the stairs to the obvious boss arena. Dr. Kamira, the Marie Antoinette robot fiddler, is up now. He doesn't pose a massive threat, keep running away from his tornado attack and do a full combo when he's in recovery. When he's trying to back away from you, you can just bulldog him until you land another hit. And with that, his inventing days are over. Princess Kiku is back to safety and that stage 5 ticked off. Grandmaster ranked done and another menu filler added to the list. In that last fight, we damaged Izaoi. We need to head to the smithy. It can't be that much of a pain, can it? Yeah, it can. This level is the one place where I really started to hurt and miss either a checkpoint system or a way to reset from the pause menu and preferably one that can just start the level again rather than going to the gear screen. It made the frequent resets I got here especially painful, as often they'd happen towards the tail end of a mission. Because, unfortunately, as it stands, the only way to reset a level is to either die to an encounter or find a lovely pit to call home, wait for the game over screen, hit retry, eventually load back to the weapon selection screen, select all your gear and double check you've got everything that you need, watch another loading screen, select how I want my blade repaired, using steel he has lying around, I'm not into the creepy shenanigans of the Shichisto sword. Skip the cutscene, and finally, after all that, start playing. Yeah. That process has been playing in real time in the background. It takes about 1 minute 10 just to get back into the game when you make a mistake. Ah. Uh, rant aside, we'll need to bring some health and strength potions to help out with the boss fight later. When we start here, dart to the left and cast Gollum into Mount Doom. Head up to the raised walkway and follow it around. Grab that potion as you pass by. When you reach the top of this ramp, there are a couple of options. If the cardiovascular challenge fellow notices you, crouch and wait for him to turn before grappling up and re-undead him. If he doesn't spot you, it's a matter of running to the left and grappling up to finish the job. Head down this pathway and as you drop off this ledge, press the attack button to get a stealth kill on the necrotic numpty below. Wait at the next corner to pounce on Red Shoe and let him be dead thrice. Carry on through the corridor. When you reach this area with the drop down, turn the corner and go for a second no look attack on the unsuspecting undead and head through into the clearing for the stage's boss fight. When it all kicks off, grab the steel in the box in front of you, chug down some performance enhancing drugs and start the full frontal assault. Your order of operations is first, focus attention on the manliths, the breathe fire and will constantly stun lock you, but they can't block any attacks. Then if there aren't any of those around, you need to target the bone bag archers. Their pot shots will interrupt your combos and make your life difficult. And finally, you can attack the decomposing swordsmen that don't pose a major threat and are relatively easy to kite around the arena. If you notice that you're on low health, kite the baddies away and gulp down a potion to get back into the fray. Eventually, the will stop spawning. You will know when the battle is over as the music will fade and the key meter doesn't show anything nearby. After that bit of argy-bargy, we can progress. But no, we can't. Ricky Maru, the mighty ninja, is defeated by this small thigh-high well. We don't seem to be able to get by without jumping, so it's back to the drawing board. Let's do some experimentation. I tried to get up onto some of the geometry and maybe roll in, but none of the sides of this well had anything with collision to let me do that. Also, none of these surrounding walls let me grapple to them either. Not that I could get to the well from there anyway. I did notice that in my fights with the mouth breathers, the final hit of fire does send me flying. Maybe that would work? So I started off, dragged one of them to me and let him hit me and SUCCESS! I'm in! But there is a barrier blocking me. Damn. So my next idea, I could kill everyone, only leave one of the flame boys left, attach a sticky bomb to him, let him knock me in the hole, which took a rather long time, and then detonate it to kill him. And that's when I realised that it didn't damage him. Even the loading screen told me that only the Muramasa blade could damage them. Another setback. But I did notice that sticky bomb blew him away in a similar fashion to how he sent me flying. This gives me an idea. Let's try to self damage boost over it. And it worked. Consider this well defeated. 
we can finally move on and we don't need to do all that finessing with the goblin to do it either. Result. So, down the well, that explosive entrance will unfortunately mess with the AI of the two walkers in the next room. This leads to some RNG. Ideally, you want the coffin dodger on the far side to start to move to the right whilst his cognitively challenged friend either jumps into the pit or turns around to give you a chance to send him back to the underworld. Then you can roll to the end of the channel, grapple up and make your way through the corridor. When you reach this outside area, check to your right and make sure no one sees you. Roll to the left behind this lamp, hug the wall and roll up the hill until this tree blocks line of sight with the belching gremlin. When he turns around, keep rolling up the hill and duck into the door. Drop down and plant yourself to wait for this soulless shuffler to approach, then turn around and accelerate the process of rigor mortis. Follow the path and grapple to this ledge. When only headed Nick turns around, pull up and reunite him with the deceased body to carry on through the passageways. When you reach this garden area, if the dead eye to head has his back to you, nip out and grapple up to this raised area on the right, cross the platform and drop off to the other side, keep rolling into this crevice and pull up to the left hand wall. Then grapple either to the fence or the door frame to the right and make your way down the blue corridor. When you reach this passage with the jaundiced juvenile, ignore him and press against this wall on the right. You need to wait for Solomon Grundy's little brother to approach and turn around and put him back in the ground. Follow the corridor around until you reach this more open area. Hug the left hand wall and pull up here. When the guillotine survivor turns around, hop up and finish the job. Make your way around to the right until you reach this blood vat. Wait for the damp draugr to start walking away. Roll down and crab walk up to him and leave him in a haemoglobin hellscape. Roll around the corner and grapple up. Follow the path and wait for this broken bobble head to walk towards you. Mind the cat on the left hand side when you head out and introduce him to gravity. You should then be able to round this corner and run to this empty husk and fill him with steel. Make your way to this final outdoor section. Head up to the low wall in front of you and wait around the corner for the decrepit bag of bones to shamble past and put him six feet under. Again. Then head up the ramp and re-deanimate the reanimated in front of you. Grapple and pull up here so you can get eyes on both the halitosis haver and the floating football. When you get a chance, make a break for the football and puncture it for good. Now carefully head up this hill and wait for the final crumbling carcass to turn around. Make a dash for it and reduce him to dust. Head for the large double doors and finally the nightmare is over. Grandmaster rank on the report card and another piece of equipment for us to discard. The big bad Ten Rai tries to sway us to his side, but we tell him to get stuffed. We've heard that someone has been impersonating Ayame. Time to investigate the bamboo forest. We're now at the point where we have a fair bit of spare equipment on the gear screen, so I loaded up for most eventualities, blowpipes for common enemies, and the rest goes for the boss fight. As we start, run behind this screen, get to the rocky wall, wait for the rotund redneck to turn around, and ye his last haul. You should be able to make your way right under the nose of the pallet swap demon, pull yourself up when he turns around, and show the world that blue blood is a myth. Drop off and make your way around the cliff face, up this hill for the Netflix edition of Daredevil to face away and blind him for good. Drop and roll off into this snowy area, hide behind this low wall until the marauder's map can be put through the shredder. Follow along the raised path to the left and head through the corridor until you reach this hot spring, duck into the crawl space and carry on crawling until you exit out the other side. Get stealth rolling through the water. When you pass these rocks, get out a blowpipe and put the doggo down. Carry on stealth rolling until you get through all of the water and you come out into the red cave. Use ninja vision and look at Beelzebub's less important brother in the distance. When he turns around, you can run up to this sugar-free red devil and forcibly remove all the aspartame contained within. Then run for the devil's kid brother and knock him back to the inferno. Head up the stairs and grapple onto this little shrine to get out. If you try the normal sides of this pit, you'll just get stuck there. Crouch down and wait for the living library to turn away from you. Then make your way behind the bamboo wall. Keep crouched to avoid being spotted by the wolf on the right. Wait for the parchment's routine to reset and pop up and stop the printing press. Immediately crouch down again and let the pup get into a better position before you put him to sleep. Press forwards and check this corner for the papyrus provocateur to turn around twice. Then head around and break his binding. Head down the path until you see the snowman in the distance, hide behind this wall where it juts out and wait for the Argos catalogue to turn around and throw him into the recycling. Head up the ramp and grapple over onto this bridge. 
keep an eye out as on the left there will be a Red Bull mascot, just sink a dart into him when he moves to the right. There will be a Blue Man Group reject who may pass on to you when he walks to this blank wall, end his career once and for all. Grapple up to the right and when the frostbitten fiend walks away, head up and amputate his cranium. Wait for the Belphegor to turn around twice and spill his guts. Follow the path down and to the right until you see this proprietor of skin cancer. You can head up right behind him and ignore him for now. Peer around the corner he isn't guarding and wait for the paper cut aficionado to turn away before finishing the demon. The paper boy will be alarmed by his red skin friend ceasing to exist and will investigate. Just pull away and wait for him to turn before you turn him to pulp. Now we have to face off against the decoy octopus impersonating our colleague Ayami. Put him down for this transgression. By this point we have a solid strategy for these bosses. Drop a smoke bomb, let the boss run to it, do a full combo and sticky bomb him as he gets up. Do this twice and that's stage 7 finished. Grandmaster rank is wrapped up and another bric-a-brac piece of tat to keep on our shelf is unlocked. We've had word that one of Goda's strongholds, the Buddhist temple, has been captured. Sending an army would alert the neighbouring states, so it's up to us to fix this mess. Now we have a standard loadout of sorts, a couple of smoke bombs, a couple of health potions, some blowpipe darts and a strength potion just in case. This is what we're going to bring for the remainder of the game. At the start we drop back a couple of steps and grapple up to this red beam, use this perch to get the drop on Buckethead's less cool brother, head back onto the beam and into the crawl space. Grapple across this gap to the opposite corner, allow the socially awkward bedroom dweller to turn left and yawn before you lay him out for a dirt nap. Make your way up to this next room to find Johnny Sins on his day off. When he faces away, run him through. Exit to the right, make sure the wicker man moves away before dropping down and break his basket. Now in this large hall area, grapple across to the next rickety platform, wait for the follically challenged individual to walk back to the left and grapple onto the floor level. When you land, blowpipe this discount pyramid head and head across and grapple up just behind his body. Wait for Helmet the Helmet Head to head off and haul yourself up, and hurriedly hit him with a heavy handed heft of Isayoi. Go to the small cubby hole on the right and grapple to the overhead ledge. Let the radio DJ move away and turn his last table. Follow through to the exit above the chasm and grapple up to the suspended bridge, pull up and head to the left. Head across this hole and floor, keeping an eye on the Jason Statham wannabe to the right, head up to him and prove his expendability. Move into this dreary beige hallway and follow it until you reach this hall area over a large death pit. Now, carefully, and I mean really carefully, grapple up to the banister in front of you. Then, fall off into the void, holding backwards to land on a hidden ledge below. Now, turn around and follow the stone passage under this crawl space and make your way up this tall room. When you finally see this entrance to the outside world again, grapple up. Yes, that is in fact a bear. No, you do not want to fight it. To your right should be an underwater basket weaver graduate. Let him slide past and test the tensile strength of his creations. Turn around and run away from the bear. Grapple up to this windowsill in the back corner and head through the door. Follow this red and white room until you're confronted by the statue of a Buddha slash Onikage hybrid. Get your items in order and jump down for the boss fight. This fight is one of the more interesting of the games. We're against Ganda and Kagura. We only need to focus attention on Kagura, the woman who attacks you with spells. If you get the chance, try to blow dart her. This will stun her and allow you to get an easy full combo. Keep trying to kite Ganda around the arena as you're doing this and it should be over fairly quickly. Your assumed dead kinsman Tatsumaru will show up, help out and then fight us as he's in the pocket of Tenai. Here we can go back to all reliable, smoke bomb, then sticky bomb the poor fella to death. He doesn't pose a huge threat if you're well equipped. That's 8 out of 10 done, we're well on our way now. Grandmaster rank attained, and more stocking fillers to hide in the kitchen cupboards now unlocked. It's time for our final journey to the Tenrai Fortress. Let's head straight in, move forwards and head to the right of this wooden structure and wait for Lucifer's lackey to move away and drop him like it's hot. Grapple up to the ceiling on top of this caravan, keep an eye out for the Charlie's Angel and you should be able to grapple to the back of the room and sidestep her. Follow the cavern to this wall, let the tumbler poster turn around before you put a stop to her blog. Follow the cave passage until you reach this large cavern. When the horny discord poster moves to the left hand side of the pier, pop out and give him the bonk. Drop down to the left and cross the cavern floor when Karen moves to the right. Grapple up to the other side and then grapple to this wall that sticks out. Wait for bootleg knives to turn around, run off and grab the ledge she's standing on. When she turns around for a second time, 
Show the power of self-respect. No time for smooching here. Grapple to this middle rock, and when Agent 47 turns around, grapple the corner behind him, and then when he turns around again, scan his barcode. Head up the stairs and around the passageway until you reach this room with the two doorways. Wait for the spa attendants to move through into the other room, check the coast is clear, and give him a quick back sack and crack. Roll away to safety and head to the trainee masseuse to give him the Japanese steel treatment. Head back around the cannons and then head to the left to let Knuckles the Echidna turn around before you forcibly choke him with a master emerald. Make you out the steps until you see Master Roshi turn and walk away. You will need a sensu bean after that. Amazingly, this is the first point in the run where we actually have to talk about the kanji across the bottom of the screen. When you kill enough baddies, you'll get this awesome magical girl transformation and unlock a new ability. In this case, the titular Wrath of Heaven, a one-hit KO attack. This will be rather useful in a short while. Anyway, back to the run. Grapple up to the above walkway and blow dart Jean-Luc Picard and turn him into a red coat. Head up the steps and head to the left over the decaying bridge and wait at this corner for Uncle Fester to finish his patrol route and send him on a quest to the morgue. When you round the corner to this room with the boxes, grapple up on the right hand side and check for skinny fat Hellboy to face away before snobbing out his final cigar. Crouch down afterwards and roll off behind the cannon when it's safe to do so. Angle the camera so you can see Spooky Elmo move away to lop off Billy's fingers. Head through the next corridor until you see these wooden scaffolds. Pause by the wall to wait for this Saitama lookalike. It seems you need the press ups as well as being follically challenged to survive Ricky Murray. At this overlook, wait for Helmet Head over there to stroll into frame and blow her away. Drop down and grapple in front of Todd McFarlane's version of a shy guy, and when he turns to the right, send him the way of the comic industry. Drop down onto the next concrete pad and roll off the edge when it's safe. Pull up to this watchtower and wait for Sengoku Jenna Jameson to turn around before giving her the shaft. Drop down and make your way into this marble room where you start in this trench. When Dr. Evil turns away from you, grapple over his head and cut him down to a more mini-me size. Roll into the far corner and put a dart into the slap head over the way. Make your way around the room, up to these large doors, and now we have a rematch with Onikage. So here, we need to take the honourable fight by choosing him. Throw down a smoke bomb and charge up a Wrath of Heaven while he's coughing up a lung, and we miss. Attempt two. Throw down a smoke bomb and charge up Wrath of Heaven whilst he's coughing up a lung and... Dunk! Grandmaster rank obtained. New item discarded. On to the final stretch. It's now time for Tenrai. As we start in this dank dungeon, grab up to this raged edge and roll off the sill in front. Wait in the corner for Krillin to turn around to force the gang to gather the Dragon Balls. Follow the candlelit passage so you can polish the noggin of this chrome-domed wanderer. Grapple up to the right to avoid the gaze of the repentant Homer Simpson and get across this gap to try your best at a hack job hair transplant. Turn around and follow the path down the slight decline. Wait for the Brit on holiday to turn and shuffle off and cut his summer short. Make your way around the bloody halls, checking for sneaky boys hidden in corners. When you're round here, let the Norwood Reaper turn to the right before preventing any further hair loss. Opposite his post is a side room. Grapple up and make your way to the corner where Faith's grandma will be, and blow dart her back to a mediocre series when she's at the end of the hallway. This will mean that the alopecia patient won't see it, allowing you to apply steroid cream to the affected area. Grapple up these large rectangular prism things and blow the monoxidil test subject away. Grapple over the gap to the area he was on, and here you need to grapple onto the ceiling, falling back onto the block below, then grapple over onto this walkway to give you a chance to add some breathing holes to this oxygen-deprived fellow. Follow the ruined room around to the left and grapple up to the two ledges ahead. Let the Sparday regular move off to the right before you cut his break short. Carefully make your way around the room until you reach a broken staircase. On the side, you will see a hidden entrance. Grapple up and ascend this red occult-like room. As you exit, be careful of the sunstroke victim and remotely send him some after sun. Grapple high up to the corner and land on the platform that he was on. Drop down and grapple up to the suspended platform and head across the small gap and crouch to avoid being seen by the crimson chin. Grapple across when he faces away and administer chin tonight by subdermal implants. Head to the opposite side of the recessed cave and grapple up to this gap next to the gate. Follow around and drop down. Rush to the corner to plug real world Neo back into the matrix. Head around the corner and gently blow this suspiciously large newborn to sleep. Grapple up to this room with the skull door and prepare for Tenrai. 
Phase one should look fairly familiar. We're not going to use any of the smoke bombs yet, so just kite around his range attack, get a combo on him, and loop him with sticky bombs. Nice and easy. He will then power up into a rather large and scary monster. So the strat is... Run away! Yep. That's it. Just run around the arena for 30 seconds or so. His cardio's trash and will tire out quickly, leading to phase three. Drop a smoke bomb, line up a wrath of heaven, and... Miss. So, run away, chug a potion, drop a smoke bomb, line up wrath of heaven, and... Miss. So, run away, chug a potion, drop a smoke bomb, line up a wrath of heaven, and... Done. Tenrai is down. We can rest easily. The game is finished. Just to get to the results screen for the last time. Grandmaster rank done. All the knickknacks on our shelves. All done without jumping once. I just want to thank... What? Some of, some of, some of you think I've missed something? Something to do with the portal? <sighs> right. Let's finish this once and for all. Through the portal we go. This time we have no choice on our equipment. And we're in a brave new world. As we start, run straight for this pillar, and as the Rosa comes down the stairs, shake hands with the firm arm of the law. Now, run upstairs through the door on the left, and head round the back of the pillar to stuff the donut operator. Wait behind this generator for Porky to turn around and show him justice. Head out onto the walkway and grapple over the barrier on the right, crouching down to avoid being spotted. Then grapple up to this high ledge on your left, drop down onto the pipework and into the crawl space. Grapple up to the vent in front of you and get behind this pillar when the coast is clear. When the plus size model turns away, run behind him and grapple up onto the raised walkway overhead. Crawl into another die-hard like ventilation shaft and drop down into this office building. Head around the room and get behind the receptionist desk and let the pencil pusher know you're ready for your appointment. When Gumshoe faces away, prevent him from reaching retirement and head into the lift. Press against this wall and let Chief Wiggum snort his last guffaw and head into the office. The final, final boss actually quite tricky. We don't have much in the way of equipment to cheese him, nor are we able to use Wrath of Heaven. However, we can use the Caltrops to act in a similar way that the smoke bombs do, but we need to be careful so we don't also step on them too. We also have a chance to get a combo on him when he does the range fireball. He is quite tricky to try and interrupt as he will focus back on you after each swing, making whiff punishment quite difficult. We should have just enough potions to get through his bags of health. And finally, Tenchu, Wrath of Heaven, a fun game from my childhood, done without jumping. I bet you didn't think you'd hear the word grapple 87 times today. Thanks to the guys who kept me motivated, and thanks to you. Good night.